Please take your seats. The show is about to begin. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Praise God. I hope you're all doing good. Uh, <clears throat> I want to share something that the Lord put on my heart yesterday. Uh, I had a conversation with my mother-in-law, <clears throat> it was good, uh, and at one point, at one point during the conversation, she was <clears throat> saying something about my wife, and I told her, you know what, she's not going to leave this place because I'm here, and we're getting back together, and she laughed, and for a split second there, I was a little annoyed and then she said oh you're sure about that I said no I'm not sure no no she said do you think so I said no I don't think so I know so because that's the promise that was made to me and I know that you and everybody else have lost your faith but I haven't and her tone completely changed from like funny to serious I haven't lost my faith I still pray about that Okay. <laughs> but, you know, we were kind of going back and forth, and um, I got confirmation in that conversation yesterday that <clears throat> whatever the Holy Spirit is telling my wife, she's starting to listen because uh, she came to our house about two weeks ago, and the conversation she wanted to have was unpleasant, but hey, okay, what you got? She told me, no, it's not gonna happen, this is gonna happen, this and that. All right, 15 minutes, done. I thought she was gonna leave. No, she took off her shoes, sat on the couch, all nice. I said, well, you want food? All right. <laughs> and we spent the entire day together. She got to the house like at one and left like at 9.30 at night. <clears throat> and, uh, we had a good time, you know, we were just watching TV, talking about her dad's uh, funeral and burial and all that, and making jokes, playing games. It was a good day. So yesterday when I'm talking to her mom, she's like, I'm gonna tell you something, but you don't tell anyone about this because you know how your wife is, and she doesn't like to tell people this and that. I said, all right, what's up? Uh, she told me about when she went to see it. And she said that you treated her very well and that you made her food and that you were really good to her. Okay, yeah, so what a shocker, you know? <laughs> but the fact that she was thinking about that, it's, it's good because according to her and the things she say and all that, this is over. Well, I don't believe that. Anyway, after that conversation and my mother-in-law's comment about uh, you really think so and all that stuff, I started thinking, why are people so reluctant to believe what God says? Even Christians have a hard time doing that. And I was, I was talking to my mom and I told her, it's because they don't understand, you know? And I started looking for for scriptures to talk about understanding and the Holy Spirit pointed me towards Ephesians chapter 1 and we say this every Wednesday and every sun and Sunday when we read the word and I started reading and when I got to verse uh, 16 and I read all the way through 19 and I'm going to read it now I do not cease to give thanks to you remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of, of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the workings of his great might. So I read that, and part of struggling the most was verse 18. 
having the eyes of your heart enlightened. Biologically speaking, that is impossible because you cannot see with your heart in the physical world. I started looking for the definition of the word enlightened. That's what I do. I look up definitions. And this is what I found. Enlightened, freed from ignorance and misinformation. Well, we know that I, the heart cannot see. But when you truly let yourself be taken by what God says, instead of putting your mind to it, you just let your spirit, your heart, actually try and make sense of it, that's when the eyes of your heart are going to get cleared, and you're going to start seeing things correctly, you know? And that's, that, that's when someone that is born again, and those things happen to them, and they start behaving based on how God makes them feel, people are shocked. And that's when the, oh, you think so? Comments come, you know? But as I was thinking about that, you know, Hebrews 11 says, faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, things of the spirit, you can see them with the heart. Uh, the Lord says, trust the Proverbs 3 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean in your own understanding. In Matthew chapter 10, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Proverbs 4 23, watch over your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. You know, all of these verses point to the same thing the heart. The Bible also says that the Lord looks at the heart of the person. That's what it means, the eyes of your heart being enlightened. That the revelation that you get from the Holy Spirit is not something that you are trying to perceive through your physical eyes. It's something that in your heart you know and understand that you have already seen it because it's been revealed to you through the Word of God. Amen. And that's when the understanding comes. And I read this thing uh, yesterday too, and you probably have heard it before, that it goes, God said it, I believe it. So, I forgot the last part, but yeah, thank you. So, he said it, I don't have to believe it, because it's true. So, regardless of what I believe or not, it doesn't matter. The word of God does not depend on my believing to make it true. But I still believe it, so. Anyone that would like to share something? Mike? <laughs> you know, the first part is the Holy Spirit, the 
James. That should discourage you, actually. <laughs> in your hands. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you give us, for giving us more surprises every day, even though we know that whatever you say you're going to do, you do. You're going to provide for us, that you're going to take care of us, that you will heal us. Father, right now, those that are mourning, give them comfort. Your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, Lord, is with them right now in that situation, Lord giving them peace, giving them rest. Your presence is with them, Lord. We thank you, Father, for everything that you do for us. We thank you for the promises that you make to us. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the revelation.
right now to those that are not yet to come, Lord. We bless you, Father. We magnify you. We praise you. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of all of our praise, of all of our thanks, of our worship. probably only have one announcement, right? Yeah. yeah. So Saturday? So what? Wow. John? That's Pot John. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. All right, so Kingdom House Prayer. Harlan Assembly of God in Ankeny will have a 24-7 burn starting January 23rd at 9 p.m. and then January 24th. So we will be playing from 5 to 7. 5 to 7. Yes, on the 24th. Yeah. It's going to be good. It'll be good. All right, let's speak the word. <laughs> Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Uh, John, will you please take the offering?
Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. There's 
nothing like your presence, Lord. Nothing like your presence, Lord. Let it come like a wave. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We glorify and magnify your holy name. And Lord, I love it when your, your children, Lord, who truly love you and, and have you in their kingdom, in their hearts, Lord. I love it, Lord, when the presence that is within them, Lord, is revealed. Lord, I see it so many times, Lord, when the body is together, Lord, in unity and spirit, Lord, that your, your glory, the presence, Lord, immerses. It comes forth from those that truly love you, Lord Jesus. It comes in like waves, Lord. We need more, Lord. We need more, Lord. Encourage, Lord. Help us to encourage those in Holy Spirit. Encourage those that have the kingdom within them, Lord, to let it loose. Let the presence come loose. Let the presence come loose. Let the presence come forth, Lord. The kingdom be released, Lord. Let it not be bottled up anymore, Lord Jesus. Let it be bottled up no more, Lord, but revealed. Because in the glory of your presence I find rest for my soul in the depth of your love I find
Lord, show us your face through those people, Lord.
Praise the Lord. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So it's our focus on Jesus, not ourselves. Amen. Verse 14 he says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It's not our holiness he's talking about. It's his holiness. Praise the Lord. We look to him. We look diligently, amen, lest we fail of the grace of God. In verse 14, follow peace with all men without which no man shall see the Lord. Right? We need to see God, amen, see the Lord. Not our holiness, see him. Verse 15 says, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you thereby many be defiled. So we, it's in, the, in that context that we look diligently unless we fail of the grace of God. When you quit looking to Jesus, you start looking to yourself. When you start looking to yourself, your holiness, your, your, what you're doing, what you're capable of doing or not capable of doing, you're no longer operating in grace. Praise the Lord. Your hands are no longer being lifted up. Now, it doesn't take you very long once you get into that place before you realize you're getting wore out. You become physically drained, emotionally drained, and spiritually drained. The more we're battling and fighting and trying to overcome all of these situations and, and circumstances, right? So let's look to Hebrews now, chapter 12. But let's, back, let's go to chapter, uh, excuse me, verse 18. And let's just read right through to verse 28. We're just, we got time, so there's... 18 through 28, yeah. For you are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words which voice they that heard entreated that the words should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. They couldn't do what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, are, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men, or people that have been justified, made perfect. Praise the Lord. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things that, that, than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, how much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven? Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more signifieth the removing of things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. That would be grace. That would be people that are putting their faith in grace. Anything other than that can be shaken. And it can be removed. Amen. We are, let us have grace. He says, wherefore we receiving a king, kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. The only way you can serve God acceptably is by grace. Yeah. Is not through what you do, but through what he's done. Right. Praise the Lord. So we stand in grace. When you've done all you can do, when you've done all to do, stand. Praise the Lord. Stand, therefore. That's our permanent, unalterable circumstance. Praise the Lord. No matter what you think your circumstance is, that is the reality of your circumstance. If you can see with the heart or with the spirit, as Roberto mentioned tonight, that's where you see yourself. Immovable, unshakable, amen? Standing, amen, in the position of grace, amen. We rejoice, the Bible says, we rejoice 
in the hope of future glory. Amen? We stand in grace, and we rejoice in hope. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, faith looks back to the cross. When, when we get saved, that's what we're doing. It looks back to the cross, and it agrees with Jesus, it is finished. Exactly. Everything's done. Amen? Faith also looks forward to what we call the future. It isn't really the future. It's only future to us in time. So faith is looking backwards and it's looking forwards, but in fact, in the spirit, it's stationary because everything is right now. Everything is finished. We are standing, amen, in a circumstance of grace where everything is provided, everything is, has been dealt with, our enemy is defeated, and when we begin to grow weak, the Holy Spirit Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, lifts up our weak arms and our feeble knees and reminds us, amen, that the enemy has been defeated, that we are victorious, amen. We cannot fail. Praise God. Now, there's another metaphor here, and that would be that we lift up one another's hands, which is what we do when we give testimonies and when we do the things that we do here tonight, when we go to people and pray with them, when we encourage them. We're doing the same thing. We're Aaron and her at that moment. We're lifting up, or Josh, uh, lifting up the, the arms of those that are ready to cave yep. because they, they're being overwhelmed by circumstances that are lies, yep. that are not reality because we are standing in our circumstances. We are in Christ. That circumstance has, has taken care of every other circumstance. It's overcome every other circumstance. Praise the Lord. Now, look, look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now that word is sozo, and, and we've talked about that a lot of times. So if, if when we were enemies, we've been reconciled to God, we've been put back in right standing with God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, now that we are reconciled, we will have everything that we have need of by his life. The life that now lives in us, eternal life, it now provides sozo, which is healing, it's deliverance, it's restoration, it's, it's everything. Sozo isn't just escaping hell and going to heaven. Sozo is all that you have need of. It's completeness. It's, it's fulfilled. Amen. It's finished is what it is. Praise the Lord. So, amen. Living in the reality of this, what we're talking about is the gospel, living in grace, Living out of grace is what we played uh, Sunday, don't worry, be happy, is a reality. I mean, I know we make jokes about it, and I can't help but kind of laughing about it, but it, it is a, it's a biblical principle. Yeah. It's, don't worry, be happy. If you're worrying, in, a, in effect, you're in sin because you're questioning God. He says we should not worry about anything. We should rejoice. We should be happy. Now, the world thinks that's what an idiot does, right? Because you've got reason to be worried. After all, everything's not perfect. We've been telling you it's not perfect, you know, so why aren't you worried? How can you be happy when everything is telling you you should be morose, you should be depressed, you should be sad? Because we're standing in, cir in, in the circumstance that is above all circumstances. We're not under any circumstances. We are above the circumstance. The circumstance that we stand in is the finished work of Christ. It's the grace of God that declares any other circumstance that doesn't comply with this circumstance is false. It's untrue. It's a deception. It's a lie of the devil. Amen? But you don't see it with your natural eyes because we're seeing in the natural the same thing everybody else is seeing. But that's why the scripture says, eyes they have, but they see not. Ears they have, but they hear not. Praise the Lord. So, you know, if you can really see, he says, here's the problem. If you could really see, then you'd have a big problem. In other words, if you had spiritual sight, but still didn't recognize that you had the victory, then you got a big issue. Because you're, you're one life living in a false reality. 
You understand what I'm saying? If you're born again, your life is dictated by this Bible. Not what you do, but what has been done for you. So if you live as though you don't have that life, you've fallen from grace. Now you subject yourself to this false reality. And this is where much of the church is. They're living by circumstances rather than the circumstance. Rather than the reality, they're living by a false reality, a, an untruth that we've accepted because the devil tells it. He's, it sounds like the truth. It looks like the truth because he's the father of liars. You know, you run into a really good liar, they don't blink. Their hands don't shake. They don't sweat. They're lying because that's what they do. They're just, they're, it's like true to them. A lie is just natural for them. It's natural for the devil. That's why he can say it with such authority and act as though, you know, you're an idiot not to believe it. And that's why people without spiritual eyes, without a spirit alive to God, are, are deceived all the time. And even much of the church, because we still live out our life based on the old man, the old reality, instead of the new reality. We let it dictate, amen, what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. And ultimately, we end up becoming just, uh, you know, instead of having sozo, we have simply the hope for eternity that will be better than this. Eternity came here. Amen? In Christ. Et time was changed. And we live out of non-time. We're not subject to the same laws and, 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 and lies, amen, that the world is subject to. Praise the Lord. So look at Hebrews chapter 12, still back to 12, and verses 1 through 3. This is the idea of renewing your mind. It is so totally disconnected from the natural way of thinking. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is unbelief and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. So everything looked like it was doom and gloom in the natural. Even his own disciples on the road to Emmaus, they said, well, you know, we're, everybody's depressed. Why? Well, because we thought he was the one. Well, he was the one. But you allowed circumstances to dictate your reality. And here he is, standing right in front of you, opening the scriptures, right? So consider him that endured such contradiction against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Peter's saying, oh, you, uh, let me straighten you out on something here. You're, you, you shouldn't be talking about this going to the cross and being crucified and dying. He says, get behind me, Satan, because you're, you're, you're speaking as if you were earthly, like you were a natural earth person who hears about crucifixion and goes, oh, my God, well, that's the end of everything then, isn't it? Well, we can't do that, right? That's what the Holy Spirit says to us when we're confronted with the financial thing, when we're confronted with the, the, the relational thing, when we're confronted with sickness. He's saying, look, there's a contradiction here. And unless, you don't, unless you're able to endure that contradiction and look to Christ, you become subject to the contradiction. We're in the world. We're not of the world. The problem is a lot of times we think we're of the world too, so we end up dealing with the consequences that the world brings. Because instead of looking to Jesus, we're looking at the circumstances. We're listening to the enemy. Amen? We're listening to well-meaning other people, even Christians, who haven't grasped this, who still think God's taken people's lives, that God is, uh, you know, punishing us for whatever, you know, for not being the perfect husband or wife or, or you know, the perfect employee or, or doing everything just the way we're supposed to. And so the results are 
pain and suffering and brokenness and despair. And it's a lie. So here we are in our circumstances, tired, amen, feeble sometimes, amen, maybe, maybe discouraged. There's nothing, that's not a sin. But here's what I'm asking tonight. Are you ready to look to Jesus and consider what he has done and will do whenever you do grow weary? Or faint hearted. See, self pity is conquered by faithfulness. Depression is overcome by confidence in Him. Doesn't mean the feelings won't come, because you've got a flesh, you've got a body, you've got a natural mind too. So those things come, but it's how you respond to it. That's why I'm so proud of Roberto. I mean, there aren't many people that would stand in that situation and continue to confess and, and, and declare what, what God has promised. That's victory in itself. That blackens the devil's eye every single time. He hates it. And so he looks for anyone, anything he can do to cause you to let down your arms. Because every time you let down your arms, the enemy's winning. Every time you stop declaring what God said, the enemy starts moving on what he has said. Amen. That's why Jesus, as long as you keep looking to Jesus, he keeps lifting the feeble arms. I know you go through it. There are moments where you go, oh, I know, Roberto, it's got to be there. I mean, it has, to, it has to come to you just like it does all of us at certain times where you just say, But because of who we are in Christ, because of what you said this evening, we look at things as though they're, they are, even though they're not in the natural. And the moment we begin to say that, the arms come up and the enemy is being defeated again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is a supernatural work of grace. It's, grace is a person. It's Jesus. And it's a supernatural work that continues in our lives all the time, as long as we keep looking to him. That's all he asks. Look to him. Quit looking at yourself. Quit looking at your circumstances. Quit judging the, everything by you. And just look to him. The moment you look to him, right? Praise the Lord. Look at Psalms chapter 34, verses uh, 3 through 8. Psalms 34, 3 through 8. These are great scriptures. Stick these on your mirror, you know, on the refrigerator, wherever, on your forehead if you have to. <laughs> but, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Praise God. That's just simply doing what you said. Believing what he said in spite of what other evidence there might be. That's trust. God loves that. And he cannot, he cannot turn away from somebody that will trust him. He'll answer all of their cries. Answer all of their needs. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 24 and 25. No man can serve two masters. Praise the Lord. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, everybody's always saying mammon is money, but it isn't. It's the natural system here in the earth. It can be money. It can be anything that is, you know, part of the system that the earth, the natural world operates in. So you can't serve God and serve the natural realm at the same time. You're going to have to pick one or the other. And we do, sadly. We bounce back and forth often. But that's what he's trying to get us to understand. We've got to stay in that one, the realm that we actually were born into. For either we'll hate the one, love the other, or else we'll hold to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, 
what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Now, it's, I know that we always think this is about, okay, am I going to have clothes to wear? Am I going to have food to eat, water to drink, whatever? And that's what it's talking about in the natural, in, on the surface. And that's a concern. But the real issue here is between flesh and spirit. Because he talks about this, for, take no thought for your life, not this natural realm, right? And then he goes on to describe what that is. It's food, it's drink, it's whatever. So he says, you know, quit focusing on the flesh, on this natural realm, and focus on God, because there's something greater than this natural realm. And if you understand that, then you can get the victory. Let's go on here, 26 or excuse me, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not life more than meat and drink. Now, every, these people are no different than us. This is 2,000 years ago, but there's really not a whole lot of difference between them and us. Jesus is speaking to a crowd of people who, who are like us. And they're, they're, they're it, this is, they weren't just mildly concerned about what they're going to eat or what they're going to drink or uh, the clothes that they're going to put on. They were anxious. Right? They were nervous. They were uptight. What am I going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to have to wear? They were focused on this natural world, and it made them anxious. If I'm telling you, the more you look at this world, the more anxious you become, the greater the anxiety, the, the more stress, the more uptight and, and uh, natural you begin to, to behave and act. Amen? So Jesus is addressing the heart that's behind this question, not really the question itself, but where they're coming from, what the real issue is. Amen? And three times in Matthew, here in Matthew chapter 6, between ver, uh, verses 25 to 34, he says three times, don't be anxious. Don't let anxiety get you. Don't let the devil focus you on this natural realm because the first thing that's going to happen, you're going to start getting anxious. You're going to start getting uncomfortable. Anxiety is going to sneak in. Amen? You're going to begin to question and doubt and worry and wonder. And you're going to start measuring everything by this natural realm. You'll start listening to the well-meaning idiots that are coming to you, thinking they're helping you. Well, come on, just, just accept it and move on, you know. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 33, chapter 6 uh, of Matthew, verse 33. Excuse me. That's why this, in context, that's what he's talking about here. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things get added. Well, the kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is Christ. He came preaching the kingdom. What was he preaching? He was preaching God has come to reconcile you to himself. Praise the Lord. So seeking God's kingdom isn't an exercise in anxiety. The church has made it that. It's made it just like it is in the world. It's made our, our, our pursuit of God, if you will, to be something that just like the world is dealing with. Never knowing for sure, could it be, will it be, won't it, I don't know what's going to happen, oh my God, this is awful, you know. But it, this is supposed to be about peace and rest. In other words, seeking God's kingdom is simply focusing on Jesus. Praise the Lord. If you want all the other stuff, whatever it is, keep your focus on Him, not on the circumstances, you know, the, the varying circumstances, the, the changing circumstances, but focus on the constant circumstance of Christ in you, of the finished work. Look at Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9.
Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Now, I want you to think about this. This is Jesus. What's true? He is the truth. Amen? Whatsoever things are honest. He cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. Whatsoever things are just. He is the, not only the just, but the justifier. Amen? Whosoever, whatsoever things are pure. He's pure. Virgin birth. No sin. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. He's the rose of Sharon. Praise the Lord. Whatsoever things are of good report. Who has believed our report? Hard to believe it. It's too good. It's good news. It's such good news that it's too good to be true. But it's true. If there be any virtue, he's virtuous. If there be any praise, all the earth is going to praise him. Think on these things. These things are one man, one person. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. Praise the Lord. Just a nice way, poetic way of saying, focus on Jesus. Keep the focus on him. Amen? Amen. God, you see, he's the ultimate gift. This isn't about things. We sometimes get it confused, but he's the gift and the giver. You get him, you get everything. There's no lack. There's no, no missing, nothing undone, nothing incomplete, right? All right, Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That is the evidence. That's the proof. Amen. That the scripture in, in, uh, in uh, Matthew where he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things are added. This is, this is the validation of that. It's a partner scripture, if you will, a parallel scripture. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Everything. All things. Amen. Look at verse, uh, stay in the same chapter and just drop down to verse 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall circumstances, you know, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness? Here's the, don't worry about what you eat, what you drink, right? Famine, nakedness, peril, sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors over every circumstance. Through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, which is all things as well. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That covers every circumstance, yeah. every conceivable situation. So here's how I'll end tonight. Be obsessed with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Be overwhelmed by our God. You want a circumstance to obsess over the finished work Christ you want, you want a, a circumstance that will overwhelm you look to God be overwhelmed by him and what he's done you say praise the Lord hallelujah give the Lord a hand clap praise God praise the Lord so we've got to remind ourselves and every time you do you'll feel strength come 
You'll feel the arms raised. And if you can see through the eyes of the Spirit, you'll see the enemy dropping like flies. Amen. 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 Circumstances being completely reversed. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. Come back Sunday. Let's believe for the circumstance to show up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all.